Hi there and welcome to SheSpice. Russell Crowe has implied that he might, in all likelihood, at no point ever return to Hollywood in the future. And this news may very well agree with Monique and Feline Williams, who could consider it to be a shrewd choice. So what precisely is happening? Russell Crowe hasn't gone to the U.S. for recording since around 2019. The star of Combatant, who now divides his time between his homestead in Nana Glen, Australia, and his Sydney loft, made sense of the fact that his American companions frequently question his non-attendance from the U.S. Post-pandemic, my American companions resemble what's happening, he said during a meeting on two-day FMS Hugh Aziad and Aaron Breakfast Show, somewhere in the range of 1,992 and 2019. There was definitely not a solitary year when the entertainer didn't make something like two excursions to the U.S. anyway. After his last film in the U.S., the spine chiller unhinged the pandemic. I haven't come back since a press visit, and he made sense of what I've been capable of. Fight a way to do a large portion of the press staying here on the telephone on the ranch over the recent years. Crow has shot in Thailand, Malta, and Britain. Ireland and Australia are now in 202. He uncovered that he was thinking about wrapping up his vocation at the 57th Carlo VAR Worldwide Film Celebration in Carlo VAR Sikh Republic. He shared that he's examining retirement as per assortment. You are remaining before the mirror and go who the F is, he told writers at the celebration. I'm in that period presently. Crow weighed up his choices, referencing 85-year-old Chief Ridley Scott as an illustration of proceeding to function as he ages. I will accept Ridley Scott as my good example. He is still finding new things in his work. Crow proceeded, or I will just stop, and you won't ever hear from me from this point forward. These are two exceptionally legitimate decisions. Fans were stunned by Russell's words, since we should be genuine. Russell has certainly become well-known in the business. Russell Ira Crow was brought into the world in Strathmore Park, a suburb of Wellington, New Zealand. On April 7, 1964, at the young age of four, his family set out on an excursion across the Tasman Ocean. Headed for the sun-splashed shores of Sydney, Australia, it was here, in the midst of the clamoring roads and dynamic culture, that the relationship with the universe of film started to bloom. His folks were attracted to the charm of the entertainment world and sought after professions in film set cooking. Drenching young Russell in the spellbinding universe of since the beginning, as destiny would have it, Crow's way to fame has been filled with fortunate experiences. An opportunity emerged when, at five years old or six, he wound up imparting the screen to, as a matter of fact, the highly regarded Jack Thompson in an episode of the Australian television series Spy Power, much to his dismay that this would check the start of his distinguished excursion into the universe of acting training coaxed, and Crow's early stages saw him crossing the lobbies of U-State-funded school and Sydney Kids Secondary School, yet it was his revisitation of the shores of New Zealand in 1978 that would shape his fate, proceeding with his tutoring at Auckland Sentence Structure School and Mount Roscoe Language School. Crow's energy for the performing expressions shined brilliantly, overshadowing any remaining pursuits. At 16 years old, Crow settled on the venturesome choice to leave formal instruction rather than seek after his acting desires with steadfast assurance. Directed by his companion and guide, Tom Sharplon, he set out on a melodic odyssey in the mid-80s, taking on the stage name Russ Laura. Despite delivering a few singles in his local New Zealand business achievement, he stayed subtle and courageous. Crow looked for comfort in the dynamic music scene, dealing with a well-known music setting in Auckland, and submerging himself in the rhythms of the city. Yet destiny, it appeared, had different designs for the trying entertainer. Australia coaxed again, and at 21 years old, Crow got back to the land down under his sight set on the renowned public establishment of sensational workmanship, Nita Anyway. Predetermination is mediated as a game-changing experience. His intrinsic coachability prompted him against formal preparation equipped with only crude ability, and, what's more, enduring assurance. Crow set off on a mission to overcome the stage and screen in his own specific manner proficiently opening doors before long being followed by Crow handling his most memorable and significant job in the New Zealand creation of the Rough Lothsmith show, coordinated by Daniel Avenieri. His depiction of Eddie Dr. Scott procured him basic recognition and set him up for an expanding profession in the performing arts. From that point on, Crow's star kept on ascending with eminent jobs on stage. 
creations like Terrible Kid Johnny and the benefits of destruction and kindred spirits. Yet it was his introduction to the universe of film that genuinely set Crow status as a rising star. His breakout job came in the 1992 film Romper Stomper, in which he depicted the magnetic and complex head of a bigoted skinhead bunch in rural Melbourne, coordinated by Jeffrey Wright. The film shot Crow into the spotlight and procured him far-reaching recognition, including an Australian film establishment AFI grant for Best Entertainer, buoyed by the progress of Romper Stomper. Crow's profession kept on thriving with jobs in a line of widely praised movies like Evidence, The Amount of Us, The Speedy, and The Dead. Anyway, it was his exhibition in the 2000 legendary verifiable show Warrior that really established his status as a Hollywood heavyweight, coordinated by Ridley Scott. The film catap Ed Crow to global superstardom and procured him a foundation grant for Best Entertainer. From that point, Crow's profession arrived at new levels with a CC guaranteed exhibitions in movies. For example, a delightful Louisiana brain secret and expert and leader the furthest side of the world in spite of the honors and adulation. Crow remained grounded, continuously endeavoring to challenge himself and push the limits of his specialty lately. Crow has kept on enamoring crowds with his different scope of jobs, from the personal show Cinderella Man to the awe-inspiring dream experience. Noah, with every job, keeps on enamoring crowds, cementing his place as quite possibly one of film's most persevering through ability, and presently, in the most recent part of his famous lifetime, he rejuvenates the celebrated exorcist Gabrielle Love in The Pope's Exorcist further exhibiting his flexibility and dominance of the art. Yet how could Russell surrender such an effective vocation? Well, as per Feline Williams, the main individuals who keep going long in Hollywood are the people who adjust to its principles. And one such individual, as per Feline, is Kevin Hart. For setting in a new meeting on Club Shay, the incredible comic Feline, Williams caused disruptions by communicating his real perspectives on individual joke artist Kevin Hart. Williams, known for his unashamed style and dauntless analysis, dove into the elements of Hollywood and the satire business. His assertions focused on Hart's quick ascent to fame and scrutinized the credibility of the comedic scene. Feline Williams started by featuring the surprising direction of Kevin Hart's vocation in Hollywood. By first scrutinizing the phenomenal speed with which Hart made progress in 15 years in Hollywood, nobody in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold-out Kevin Hart show. There was a line for him to truly get a deeply heartfelt applause at any satire club. Williams continued and proposed that Hart's fast climb was strange and suggested the conversation starter of whether Hart had genuinely put in his time in the cutthroat universe of stand-up parody, the jokester underlined the meaning of the excursion and addressed whether Hart's apparently case. Achievement was characteristic of an alternate story he previously had his arrangements when he arrived. Have we known about a humorist that came to L.A. and in his most memorable year in law? He had his own sit. Come on network TV and had his own film called Soul Plane that he was driving no in the meeting feline, Williams acquainted the term plant with portray somebody who apparently shows up all of a sudden and achieves accomplishment without the customary battles that jokesters frequently face and afterward guarantees they are independent Williams, then notice the reality that Kevin Hart's narrative with Chris Rock uncovered his satire roots on the East Coast. He highlighted an apparent inconsistency in Hart's story, taking note that he just did his narrative with Chris Rock, where he shows you that his entire childhood in parody was on the East Coast, so how all the while was he here in Los Angeles doing likewise? It didn't occur. Williams examined the irregularities in the Hart story, testing the generally acknowledged an account of an out-of-the-blue phenomenon. Williams additionally went further to uncover the things that Kevin Hart and different comics have done to be acknowledged as elite big names. He uncovered that he had a strained experience with Martin Lawrence, who attempted to make him wear a dress for a film job. Williams said that he was offered a section in Lawrence's film Enormous Mother's Home as well, yet he turned it down. When he figured out that he needed to take on the appearance of a lady, he guaranteed that Lawrence was not content with his choice and attempted to pressure him into doing it. He expressed, Come on, man. It's simply parody. It isn't so much of a serious dislike. You're actually a lady. I said, no, man, I'm not doing it. I have standards and I have pride. I would rather not slight myself or my kin, he said. Well, you're passing up a major open door. You could be a star. I said, I'm now a star. 
I don't have to wear a dress to be entertaining. William said that he regards Lawrence as an entertainer, however, he disagrees with his decision to wear dresses for giggles. He said that he accepts. Subscribe She Spice for more videos.